How many of you guys use this machine for nothing more than the warm up of your workouts? How many of you use this machine for your actual workout? Because what we found is that if you know how to warm up on this machine for the row, instead of using the row for the warm up, you can get a lot of really good work done. You'd be amazed what can happen. I hear from a lot of people, they're gonna use the first part of their workout to warm up, say a 10K or a 5K. Well, I'll use the first thousand meters to warm up. That time actually matters. What if you are trying to get a 10K PR or that 5K is thrown in the midst of another workout? Or what about a 2K? Certainly can't warm up in the first 500 and expect a good score. So today, we're gonna talk about some basic warm-ups you can do to get comfortable and feel better on the machine when this is your workout. Step one is that you're gonna start to work through some drill work. Hopefully you've found a few of our drills in the past. If not, go check them out. You can do anything from reverse pick drills, which would be legs only, or maybe top quarter, just the top quarter of the catch, to pause drills. Focusing on mechanics is a really great way to get you warmed up for the movement because it allows you to sequence things the way they need to be sequenced. Meaning I'm practicing the phases of the movement as a skill and that skill is going to only help my workout and I'm simultaneously going to get warm. So using drill work, I want you to spend five to 15 minutes before a workout using drill work to warm up. Don't think of it as the warm up, think of it as drill work. So focus on the movement and what you'll find is that you're naturally going to get warm. The, the warmth happens because you're moving. So again, pick a few drills that make sense to you. I'm a huge fan of starting with practicing arms and body only. These are pick drills and you're focusing on the order of operations, getting the arms away, closing the hips. Arms away, closing the hips. From there you can add in legs and hips. Reverse pick drills, so I take the arms out of it. Focus on how to use the legs and how to swing the hips, finding the proper order of operations. Those are two great ones, but again, feel free to grab any drill that we've done in our library. Next, I'm gonna have you guys working on that hamstring because we spend a lot of time in the stroke moving through the hips. And one of the biggest issues we find is that people get either a posterior pelvic dump or they spread their rib cage too wide and end up in this broken posture. So you're gonna be focusing on how do we move the hips without breaking posture. And to do that, we are going to work on that hamstring mobility first. So I'm gonna have you fold. You're gonna put your hands on the ground and you're going to place your weight in your front leg. This leg is almost weightless. From here, I'm going to try and extend my knee and then bring my nose to my knee. And then rebend, extend, nose to knee. Rebend, extend, nose to knee. I'm gonna switch. So now I put that weight on that front leg again. Bend, extend, nose to knee. Now when I'm extending, I'm trying to push my hips all the way up to the ceiling. So I'm pushing those hips up to the ceiling or the sky and then bringing my nose in. I want you to do 15 on each leg and what you'll find when you get up, that hamstring should feel really nice and warm. That warmth is what we want. That means that you're starting to lengthen things out. Next, I'm going to have you practice some hip hinges. So you're gonna set your feet at about shoulder width. You're gonna take your arms overhead and you're gonna reach your butt back. Now your goal is that you start to feel a pull through the hamstring, but what we're really practicing is how do you move through the hips without breaking that posture, without giving up your posture. Imagine that you have a wall behind you and you are trying to touch your butt to that wall. And you're stretching that hamstring each time moving from here as if you had two handles on the side and I'm cranking those handles, not keeping them stationary and then moving my spine. All right, so you're then going to do 15 of those. So 15 of the leg extensions on each side and then 15 of the arms overhead, reaching the butt back. So next we're gonna warm up the ankles because this is, in all honesty, this is probably one of the, the biggest things that people complain about is they say, ah, oh, I can't, I just, I can't get into good position. My ankles are really tight. 
While that I don't believe is as often the case as people make it out to be, I created this little ankle warm up that we can do really easily on the machine, no tools other than what's here to help you lengthen out that gastroc, lengthen out that Achilles, get that foot a little bit stretched out so that hopefully you can get a little bit deeper into the catch without having to lift that heel quite as much. It's very simple, all you're going to do is set your foot in the foot stretcher. You're then gonna grab onto this down rail and you're gonna hold onto the foot stretcher itself. You are then going to keep your heel down. You're gonna try and bring your seat or bring your butt in as close as you can to your heel. Now you're gonna to start to feel this pull through here. That's a good pull. Okay, we're gonna sit in this for about 15 seconds. At the end of 15 seconds, I'm gonna lock myself in place with my arm and I'm gonna try and push into the foot stretcher with my toe. So I'm pushing two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna release and I'm gonna try and pull myself in a little bit tighter. Now just let this leg do whatever it needs to do to get out of the way. So then I'm gonna use my arms to pull in a little bit more. You'll notice that each time that stretch gets a little bit deeper. So another 15 seconds and then I'm going to press for five. That's one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna pull in a little bit deeper and I'm just gonna keep that up. I want you to do that four times per leg. And what you should find is at the end, everything should feel a little bit warmer and a little bit looser. And what you'll notice is that as you come into the catch, that position on the Achilles loosens up a ton. And now finally, what you're gonna do is that before the effort actually starts, you need to feel the machine. You need to think of it as you need to feel your pace or feel the power you're gonna use that day. So for the final part of my warmup, I'm going to strap in and I'm going to start building to the pressure that I want to use for the day. So if it's a 2K, obviously I'm going to be a bit more aggressive. If it's a 10K, I just need to feel what my coasting pace is gonna be. So I'm gonna grab my handle and I'm gonna spend another five minutes on the machine. Remember, this warm up is all about making the workout as effective as possible. Maximizing what you get out of the workout by what you do ahead of time to prepare for it. So I'm gonna grab my handle and I'm gonna spend five minutes, anywhere from three to five, building in pressure to my goal pace for that day's workout. So you'll start nice and light. And every 30 seconds or so, you're gonna step up in the pressure, meaning the way that you push away from the machine, not in the speed of your stroke rate. If the stroke rate comes up a little bit, that's okay, but you're gonna spend the majority of the time just pressing a little bit harder through the machine every stroke. This is the warm up that I use when I am inside of any workout or getting ready for any workout on the rower. I need to make sure that all of the parts of the body that I'm going to use are warm and ready. That's my ankles, my hamstrings, my back, and that I've gotten hot and sweaty and ready for the effort and also felt the effort that I'm gonna do that day because I don't, I don't want anything to surprise me. My goal is not to jump on the machine, warm up as I go and Fingers crossed that I end up where I wanna be at the end of the line. I wanna make sure that I know where I'm gonna end up and that I'm successful in my effort. 500, 2000, 5K, 10K, Jackie, whatever the workout is, I'm getting ready for it on the rower and I encourage you to do the same. Make sure that you hit all parts of this workout. So again, we started with a nice spin, just getting your body ready, using drills, making sure that those drills are oriented towards skills that you might need to work on. And to find any of those, just go back in our library, we've got tons of videos. Next, you're gonna work on the mobility piece, the hamstring, the ankle. From there, we're gonna add some pressure to get you ready for the amount of effort you're gonna put into the workout that you're doing today. Guys, use that sequence, and I think you will find that you're much more comfortable getting into the workout, and that workouts get a little bit easier and a little bit more fine-tuned. And that tuning is really what you're gonna get comfortable with when you've been spending more and more time on this machine. So this is our rowing warm-up. I want you guys to go give this a try. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you've got things that you do differently or that you'd add to it, let us know. I wanna hear about it so that maybe we can help others with the same thing. As always, if you are an athlete and you're here and you're looking for programming, make sure you head to darkhorserowing.com where we have athlete programs. Meaning if you're wondering, how do I get faster at my 2K or my 500 or my 5K or calorie rowing, we've got you covered. We have programs for it. Coaches, if you're watching, we have the Dark Horse Academy intended to teach you how to use this machine for your athletes and for your career of coaching and personal training. Guys, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you on the other side.